good evening to everybody once again i greet you all in the most blessed name of our lord and savior jesus christ this evening in continuation to our studies on christian assembly the english presentation today is the 16th episode which i am going to present here in this connection therefore yesterday we just started learning about the unity of the christian assembly there are fourfold important aspects to be contemplated in this relation of which the first two we have already studied the first one was the unity in diversity the basic references of scripture which supported the unity in diversity was from 1 corinthians chapter 12 where apostle paul says even though the body is one which has got many members and body is not full full of body is full of members and those members each of them have its own independent function and a common function resulting for the common good of the body the whole body comprised with different members are in total subjection and obedience to the head to which the body is connected and in which i also said the church of jesus christ is comprised of both the jews and gentile believers and the unity is spoken about in the old testament about the children of israel as one nation but at the same time the nation was divided into 12 different tribes each uh, tribe had its own function its own characteristics its own way of working but when they come together they are called one nation in jewish israelites unity and while we say that they were one nation but still the tribes were different and each of them they had their separate identity within the composition but when it comes to the church of jesus christ no such differences or distinctions are found rather everyone who believed in the saving knowledge of jesus christ are put into that one body relationship and they are one in the family they have one father who is the god the father for all and they are brethren each other so therefore they cannot have any separate identity within the body relationship when it comes to uh, the church of jesus people brought to this one body relationship are from kindred thanks cultures and uh, nations but that uh, they are one in the lord jesus christ and uh, secondly we have learned about the apostolic unity the reference was from jude verse number 3 where we read that though jude the servant of the lord was com- uh, was desirous to write about the salvation common to all but he was constrained to write about the faith which was once delivered unto the saints the faith which is delivered to the saints is not specifically speaking about the faith unto salvation which everyone have if they believe they will be saved but the faith which is spoken about here has to do with the various christian doctrines new testament doctrines or church doctrines which the holy spirit of god has given to us through the 21 epistles in the new testament 
they are actually talking about various aspects of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the functioning of the church on the basis of the doctrine of the apostles and the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the servant of the Lord has connected this passage of scripture to John's Gospel chapter 17 which is well known to Christendom as the intercessory prayer of our Lord. When the Lord Jesus Christ was offering his intercessory prayer in John's Gospel chapter 17, he there prayed for three different uh, unity. Unity in the past, unity in the present, and unity in the future. Verse number 11 of chapter 17 speaks about the apostolic unity. Christ was praying to God the Father as we were one, that I pray that this may be one. And verse number 11, that is unity in the past. And then verse number 21, the Lord was praying for the practical unity in responsibility. Then comes to verse number 22, 23, and 24. Again, he is speaking about the unity in glory, that is the future unity. So unity in the past, unity in the present, and unity in the future was the main theme in the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ made in his intercessory prayer, which is recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 70. Together with that, I also mention you from Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Seven things are mentioned there about us, one. That is one body, that is the body of Jesus Christ, which is the universal church, which is comprised of all born-again believers. Not only the 25,000 brethren, if they all are saved, but people from all walks of life, all denominations, and from all caste and religions who have personally exercised their faith in the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ are added to the mystic body or the universal body of Jesus Christ and therefore Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 to 6 the one body mentioned there by the Holy Spirit of God is speaking about not the local body but the universal body which is the church of Jesus Christ. How, if, it, if it were about the local church that it will, it will not be fitting to the context of this passage because there are so many different local gatherings are all over the world in the name of church. Therefore, one body is primarily and fundamentally implicating about the body of Jesus Christ. Then we have one spirit that is spoken of the Holy Spirit of God. Every born-again believer possesses the Holy Spirit of God as he indwells in the heart of the believer. A born-again Marthamite brother, a born-again Jacobite, a born-again R.C., a born-again brother, a born-again Pentecostals, a born-again CSI, CNI, or whatever the denomination it might be. Bible says, everyone who have personally believed in the Lord Jesus and accepted Him into their heart, the Holy Spirit of God dwells in their life and uh, His dwelling will continue to be with uh, them till the day they shall be translated into the very image of our Lord Jesus Christ, which would happen in the day of the rapture of the church. So one body is the universal church, one spirit is the Holy Spirit of God, which uh, dwells with every born-again believer. Then Paul says, one hope of calling. Every one of us we have been called to one hope. That is, what is that? We are respecting for the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ from heaven. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven. From whence we are waiting the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when he comes, that this mortal body of our shall be transformed into the very image of the 
body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall put on the glory, glorified nature in our resurrection. So we have our anticipation and expected, expectation for the glorious coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the one hope of calling. We are all called unto a confident expectation that our Savior would come back and receive you and me unto himself and they will be with him forever and ever. That is one hope of calling. Then we, then we have the mentioning of one Lord. The word Lord is actually speaking about the Lordship of Christ. We have one Lord, overall the God of the Bible. So one Lord means that he is the only master of our souls. And then we will have one faith. This one faith is actually speaking about the various doctrines which are given to us in the end of 21 epistles from Romans to Jude. If the faith which is spoken about here is about the faith of anything other than the faith in the sound doctrines which God has given to, the, given to his church, then it will not fix to the context because we have so many local congregations around us and each of the congregations have their own specified teaching bias to their standing. For example, if I say that I was a Marthomite brother till the age of 18, I have, my parents had given me the infant baptism according to the belief of the Marthoma church. And uh, I was going to attend every vacation Bible trainings, Sunday schools, and as I grew up, that I, every Sunday I used to go for the, the worship meeting in the Marthoma. But uh, in those days I never thought that there is truth in the Bible outside what I have been taught from my former relationship. But later on I had to read the Bible myself and the Holy Spirit of God opened the inner heart of mine and I was able to go into the depth of the truth of God's word which is revealed to us through His Holy Spirit. Thus I realized certain teachings of my former commitment has not been in tune with the word of God and I had to say goodbye. That is my, there only I understood the difference of the doctrinal stand. So one faith which is given here or spoken about here is not about each denominational faith or each church faith because brethren have one faith, Baptists have another faith, uh, Marthamites have their faith. No, it's not talking about that type of local uh, denominational distinctive faith, but the faith which is delivered once to the saints, which is found in the 21 epistles of the New Testament. And then we have one baptism. That also I said yesterday. One baptism is not talking about various baptismal method, which is relevant with the different local churches. The Episcopalians, they have infant baptism as their practice. They take the child by the eighth day of the of, of its birth by the RCs, and uh, then the other Episcopalians by the fifty sixth day of the birth of the child, and the sprinkles the water upon the child mixed with moron, which is the holy ointment made for unction, and then the child's father or grandfather confesses the faith on behalf of the child, saying that I give up Satan and then accept the Lord Jesus Christ. That is also not in correlation with the doctrine of the Christian baptism, which is spoken about by our Lord Jesus Christ or practiced by his apostles in the book of Acts. So therefore, one baptism which is spoken about here is not the water baptism. Had it been, we could justify that those who just, those who practice the infant baptism could justify that what they do is the right method of baptism. And whereas some other groups are performing the adult baptism, 
and yet others are following the believer's baptism. So we have different mode of baptism, baptisms in Christendom and each of, each of the churches will defend for their stand. But here the one baptism which is mentioned is about the one baptism which is spoken about uh, of the church in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 whether Paul says whether, we, whether it be Jew or Gentile that we, have, we are all being brought to one body through one baptism that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit which has been taken place historically in the day of Pentecost as the Holy Spirit of God descended from heaven and filled in the room where the disciples were waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit of God. So one baptism has to do with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Here also in before in one of my classes I I said that uh, Dr. John of Walwood, the founder, president of the Dallas Theological Seminary, has written, written a beautiful book uh, on the title Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, in which he says that no amount of physical water can add a believer into the mystic body of Jesus Christ. Whereas he says, therefore, uh, the baptism which is spoken about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 and Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 9 are not speaking about the physical water baptism, but they are speaking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit by which the born-again believers are added to the mystic body of Jesus Christ. And then finally, Paul is talking about uh, God and Father of all, one God and Father of all, that we have there, thus one body, one spirit, one hope of calling, one Lord, one baptism, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all. So again, today, let me go quickly to the third point of the unity of the church. That is, the relationship of the unity. What is the relationship of the unity the Bible speaks about? We read it in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Paul says, unity of the spirit and bond of peace. Uh, maintain the unity of the spirit and bond of peace. That is the Christian maintenance of unity, that relationship of the unity. When we study the book of Exodus, particularly if I say Exodus chapter 36 verses 31 to 36, I'm not going to read those verses here, but similarly I make mentions here. Exodus chapter 31, 36 verses 31 to 36, where the narration of the making of the court of the courtyard of the holy tabernacle is spoken about. So tabernacle is a miniature of the church of Jesus Christ. Typically speaking, it's a type of the church of Jesus Christ in many ways. I don't want to take your attention to all the details of the tabernacle at this juncture because my subject is not that if in the days coming that uh, if the Holy Spirit of God gives me that guidance to take tabernacle as a special subject of presentation then I would uh, uh, present it as the Lord enables me. But here we read the relationship of the unity well typified or pictured in the making of the tabernacle in the Old Testament for the children of Israel. The word tabernacle means a meeting place. It was a place where the Israelites and the Almighty God were meeting together. The high priest standing in the Holy of the Holiest on behalf of the children of Israel bearing two breastplates on his chest upon which the twelve uh, names of the tribes of Israel are imprinted. And when he stands in the presence of God, the Holy of the Holiest, it is understood that uh, he represents the whole nations and the whole nation as if standing in front of God in a spiritual sense. Where he is speaking to God, offering sacrifices to God so that the sins of the people may be forgiven and they may be received the favors from God. So here, in the making of this tabernacle, every one of us we know, 
that the tabernacle had essentially three parts holy place the court the holy place and the holy of the holy the mercy seat was placed in the holy of the holiest upon which two cherubim 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 sar uh, kept and uh, standing and uh, uh, upon which the chagena glory of the lord was flashing so where the, the 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 high priest was standing once in a year at far, but that's for a short while on behalf of the sins of the people of god and offering sacrifice there so in the making of the courtyard of the the tabernacle the bible says in exodus chapter 36 verses 31 to 36 that 48 wooden boards covered the tabernacle from the outside defilements and andelites the tabernacle the entire tabernacle had to be protected from the outside defilement that is dust and winds as well as at the same time from the outside light because the light which lightened in the tabernacle was the light of the candlestick and no outside light was uh, accepted in the worship services so in order to cover the entire courtyard 48 different wooden boards are uh, used and they covered the outer outer courtyard of the tabernacle of god these boards were fixed on silver sockets each boards were fixed on two silver sockets one speaks about the death of sacrificial death of jesus christ while the other is speaking about the resurrection of christ how greatly the holy spirit of god has placed this mystic truth in those old testament types which are assembles the meaning of the church of jesus so of this 48 wooden boards each of the boards are standing on two silver sockets and there is a secret about these silver sockets also these are the uh so the the material or the cost of the material which moses had bought from the children of israel as their redemption price the price for their redemption the rich and the middle class and the poor in the community have to pay each one half a shekel the the price of the redemption and with which moses had made the silver sockets upon which these wooden boards are standing upright 48 uh, wooden boards are used there in the making of the outer court of tabernacle and uh, we know that five uh, boards iron boards not iron boards but brazen boards are passing through these 48 wooden boards just keep keep in mind that the 48 wooden boards standing upright round about the tabernacle to cover the entire tabernacle from outside light and outside dirt dust and defilement and these 48 wooden uh, wardrobes or boards are standing upright and there are five uh, def- five uh, you know the brazen boards which are passing through these 48 wooden boards. Uh, wooden boards out of the five brazen boards which are passing through these wooden boards to make them stand upright in the or, or on the on the three sides of the tabernacle uh, the one bar all the four bars are passing through the outer side of the board from one to the other in the olden days we had a kind of shutter for our old business shops a folding door which was connected by such a iron bars so the doors can fold it into two fold or three fold <coughs> in the same way the brazen uh, bars are fixed from one box to the other box round about all the 48 bars so therefore the boards are st- able to stand upright protecting the tabernacle from the outside defilement and dust 
But uh, when we study about these five bars, only four bars are passing through the outer side of these bars, whereas one bar is passing through the in in of all the bars. All the forty-eight bars are the bars. This uh, the fifth one is passing through, but it is not visible to the outside ears. Four of them, anybody can see because they are passing through the outer surface, whereas the the last one is passing through the inner side of the each box what does it depicts the bible says see the four boards which unites the 48 wooden boards which covers the tabernacle in its entirety we see the meaning from all the four gospels of matthew mark luke and john whereas those who have believed in the lord jesus christ irrespective of their caste color or religion even denomination they are put together in the lord jesus christ in a unity of the bond of the spirit you don't just misunderstand that only pentecostals or brethren or baptist are the people who are reserved and registered in heaven for them people from all all walks of life they are born again though they though, though they have trusted jesus christ is their messiah and their savior suppose a person from any denomination whether it may you just name it rc or lc or uh, jacobites or orthodox or marthomites or evangelicals so whatever it might be let it be for your peace i am saying you a person who confessing that jesus christ is my savior that he said the bible says that he that call upon the name of the lord shall be saved romans chapter 10 verse 14 so and also we read in ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 by faith through grace that we have been saved that means we have personally exercised our faith upon the substitution death of jesus christ which he wrote about the cross of calvary by offering his own body on our behalf we believe it and we accept him we accept him into our heart the very moment that he is placed in the in the church of jesus christ and he is standing there upright by the help of the unity of the holy spirit of god because every born again believer is being possessed by the holy spirit of god within his heart who is invisible to the visual eyes as i told you all the four a uh, brazen bars which are, which are passing through the outer surface of the 48 wooden uh, boards can be visible whereas the fifth one is invisible because it's passing through all the uh, 48 boards through it in that means it goes it, it goes through the inner part nobody can see it in the same way the holy spirit of god is invisible in his nature and we cannot visualize him we cannot see him with our naked eyes but uh, every born again believers together the holy spirit of god keeping them in christian unity even though the churches may have differences of unity experiences as each of them they have their own bias teaching and everyone claims that abides is biblical but you understand all the born again christians are put together in the spirit of u- uh, unity in the, in the bond of the spirit of unity in the one body relationship uh, and this tabernacle it's making is actually wonderfully illustrate how the holy spirit of god is passing through every believer to put them together into that unity unity relationship when we study the epistle of ephesians where the apostle paul teaches us of the unity of the spirit the bond of peace whereas the following book the book of philippians paul is teaching us or exhorting us to regain the unity which was lost four different expressions are made there by apostle paul just listen to me i'm not going to read those verses because of the laxity of time but i want to turn your attention to all these four important aspects number 1 in philippians chapter 1 verse 28 he exhorts the saints in philippi to stand fast in one spirit paul was exhorting the saints in philippi to say to saying them to stand fast 
in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel so we christians i think the time is out now in india we have so much of persecution report in north india every hour every days one christian common general forum has already submitted some memos to the parliament and to the prime minister for the protection of christians and their churches in india as we are the secrets of peace in a society i tell you the time is high and the time is out for all the christian people to the extent what they can stand in their unity i i don't say that everybody should become one church that is impossible because for example the orthodox and jacobites they cannot stand together they are fighting each other one is looting the other and the other one is persecuting the other so they cannot stand in unity that is that's true while uh, a church group which has got the same doctrinal stand cannot hold together then how can all the denominations and all the churches all the local assemblies of the world can be put into a, 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 a solid unity teaching the same doctrine it is quite impossible but while we differ in our doctrinal stand or our practices but still for our common good i think the time is high that we should stand together to defend for our faith and defend for the gospel of jesus so paul exhorts here the saints in philippi saying to stand fast in one spirit that is in the with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel which was delivered to the saints Philippians chapter 1 verse 28 and then we have verse number 2 and 2 verse 2 that is being of one accord of one mind is a, he invites the saints to being of one accord and one mind that is called the mind of Christ if you have the mind of Christ Paul says there and thirdly chapter 3 verse 15 where Paul says as many as are mature have this mind mature means spiritually mature and then finally in chapter 4 verse 2 he exhorted the brothers and sisters to be in the unity of mind saying be united and joyful in prayer be united and joyful in prayer and the fourth aspect in the unity of the church is the blessings of the unity so we have the foundation of the unity then the illustration of the unity then the the apostolic unity and finally the blessings of the unity psalm number 133 so but that's the shortest psalm in the psalms we have 100, 150 psalms all together 117 is the shortest and then comes another shortest one psalm number 130 this is a very beautiful song psalm song which is compelling for brethren to stand together in unity unity in love okay let me read only that though that that psalm comprised three verses so that i would read that three verses right now for your information it's a song of ascent that this is a we have two types of songs written by the psalmist one, one is song of ascension and the other one is song of descension i tell you in short what is song of ascension what so what, what is song of descension song of ascension is the songs the slaves used to sing while they were climbing the steps of the hill of the temple as they are stepping each steps and going into the temple they will line up each one under their flag of their tribes and then sing in unity this song and uh, after offering sacrifice and worship then they when they return the same way that in orderly as they stepped up they will step down so then they will be singing some song of this uh, uh, descent so we have thus the song of ascent and song of descent and this some 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 133 is a song of ascent how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity it is like precious oil poured on the head running down on the beard 
running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of the Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life for evermore. And this is the beautiful sa song we have in Psalm number 133. In this psalm we can, see, we can see two illustrations and two adjectival phrases used by the Holy Spirit of God. All these are very important. Two illustrations and two adjectival phrases. I tell you what are they. How good and how pleasant. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard of Aaron. We know that the the anointing oil was poured out on the head of the high priest, not on his body. Exodus chapter 32 very strictly exhorted that this, this oil should not be applied on the body bodies of Aaron and his children, but only on the head, which resembles the Savior Messiah, whose name means the anointed, anoint, the anointed one. And whom the Father God anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. And we are the body of the anointed Christ. As we are neatly connected to his head. The, to the head which is the Christ. The body is also having the exact blessings of the unction which the head is holding. Here what, is, what does it is illustrated? The anointing oil is poured upon the head of Aaron. Which runs deep down onto the brim of his garment. Thus what happens? The whole body is fragranced. That means the anointing, the whole body is having the fragrance of the anointing oil because it was applied on the head, but it runs down through the beard and to the brim of the garment of air in the high priest. How it is like, like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. What a beautiful psalm is this two illustration, two, uh, two adjective phrase. How pleasant and uh, how good are the brethren to live together. So this is the blessings of unity. As we Christians, we understand the foundation of the unity. The apostolic unity, the apostles maintained in their practical Christian life and in their preaching and also the relationship of the unity, which I already explained through the five different brazen bars which connects each of the 48 wooden bars which covers the tabernacle is caught from outside dust and defilement. The same way the believers are neatly connected through the word of God and also by the Holy Spirit of God, whereas we are able to stand upright, protecting the glory of of our Lord Jesus Christ. And such a life brings the real blessings in unity. May God bless you all by the hearing of these words and God willing in the next lesson that I will be discussing over the future of the church of Jesus Christ. How and what it will be. May God bless you all in his blessed ministry. Evangelist Titus from Yadayarmula. Thank you.